Hey guys, still here, and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. By the time that you're watching this video, the next patch has probably arrived, but since I record my content a few days in advance, I'm still on Alpha 12 version 8.6, whereas the next version of the game, which is going to bring quite a lot of changes, might already be here. So that is why. Still, I do expect some people to skip to another part of this video and just ignore this message altogether. Anyway, today a scenario by Azor the First. German scientists escape to Spain with the key to time travel. As the Allies close in to stop them, Spain manages to send back a single light cruiser and try to prevent the disasters of 1898. So we're going to be time traveling today. Time for the extended backstory. The year is 1945. As the Allies close in on Berlin, a small team of German scientists flee to neutral Spain hoping the Cordillo will help them change the outcome of the war. Instead, however, the Spanish dictator seizes the technology for Spain and tasks his military to make it ready to prevent the disaster that was the Spanish-American War. Almirante, you have been given command of La Gloria de España, an experimental light cruiser that has just been installed with a top-secret wormhole generator, sorry, top-secret time wormhole generator. Your orders are to travel back to t in time to July 1898 and intercept the American squadron on its way to Spanish Cuba and sink as many transports as possible to prevent the American capture of Cuba. Further, you must attempt to damage or sink as many of the American warships as possible prior to making your escape in order to hopefully change the outcome of the Battle of Santiago de Cuba. To this end, you've been given total control of outfitting of your vehicle with the latest technology available. However, the wormhole generator installed weighs a considerable amount and can only transport up to 10,000 ton vessel. Your base design must not exceed 9,500 tons. Very creative use here. So um, the wormhole generator, if you will, or the, the time wormhole generator only, well, only, uh, weighs 500 tons, which is a considerable amount. And I need to make sure that I have um, a maximum displacement of 10,000 tons. But of that, I can only use 9,500. Good luck, Almirante. The hopes and dreams of Spain rest in your hands. Very interesting scenario. I'm going to be doing a 1940s cruiser design. And the enemy is going to be four battleships, two heavy cruisers, two torpedo boats, and a bunch of transports. Let's see. We need ten transports, according to the scenario. Ten transports. The objective is to sink at least 50% of the transports and cause as much damage as possible to the American squadron before the wormhole generator automatically sends you home. And that's one hour of in-game time. Considering that I start at 21,000 meter range, I need to have a fast ship. Because I need to close the distance, and I need to very quickly get in there and deal damage against those transports before I get sent back home. But that's not all. Time travel is not well understood science and leaves much room for things to go horribly wrong. Or, amazingly right, prior to starting your design, roll a six-sided die to determine the outcome of the winds of fate. So, let me roll a dice. Sorry, not a dice. Uh, let me roll a die. Six. Conservation of mass. The slide rule boys have come up with some last-minute calculations that allow for more mass to be transported. Oh, good. Maximum allowed tonnage for increased from 9,500 to 10,500 tons. Oh, that's excellent. Okay, so then I would have 10,500 tons that I can uh, displace, um, I think. I'm still going to assume that the wormhole generator is 500 tons. Some other options that I would have had. Um, I can have rolled one. Location data error. The calculations must have been off. You've been transported closer to the enemy fleet than planned. Roll a 20-sided die and subtract that many kilometers from the starting battle range. Wow, this is intricate. Um, roll a 2, all goes planned. Very good. Squ uh, number 3, square peg, meet round hole. Uh, I have seen Quinn work that. It is uh, a problem. It seems like the wormhole wasn't quite large enough to fit the whole ship. But we didn't need those extra bits anyway, right? Do not use any radar technologies in your designs. Uh, it's like the radar mask got cut off. Number four. 
Location data error. The calculations must have been off and you've been transported farther away from the enemy. Roll a 20-sided die and add that many kilometers to the starting battle range. Or had I rolled a 5, rushed production. American spies have discovered production and research facilities and the Allies have launched an invasion of the homeland to stop us. Corners will have to be cut to guarantee the mission is able to go forward. Maximum tonnage reduced to 7,900 tons. So I rolled a very favorable outcome there. But definitely props to Azor for coming up with all these uh, very interesting ways of adding random number generating design, uh, or die design if you will, into a scenario. All right, time to get to designing. We have the modern light cruiser hull or the modernized cruiser. These are only 7,000 tons, these are 10,500 tons, and that is what I'm allowed to use. So let's upgrade that to max. Now, let me see, what was the name of the ship? Um, La Gloria de España. Now, I know that there should be one of those curved things above the N, but I don't know how to do that. I don't know what the code is for that. All right, uh, many bulkheads range. <laughs> I don't know. We have a wormhole generator. I'm going to set the range to none. Well, no, that's not fairly... Here, medium. Um, this is a very advanced ship, and I'm going to use it as such. I'm going to go with all sorts of advanced gimmicks, and hoping that I can still provide enough firepower while uh, having such an advanced ship. All right, modern tower two. Again, uh, by the time that you're watching this, there might be a whole bunch of new towers or new hulls, but this is what I have at the moment. I'm looking at 6,800 tons out of 10.5, so out of a maximum of 10, effectively. I want to be faster. Uh, 39 knots is too fast, because then I cannot add any guns. 36 knots, I think, is a decent trade-off. One funnel, engine efficiency 50%. Oh, no. Oh, no. That means I'm going to have to add, install two. 91. 79%. I do like to be above 80 to get that additional torque. Oh, that thing doesn't even want to fit. That's unfortunate. Um, I have 600 tons left and I still have to add guns. Oh, dear. Now, I am trying to very quickly get rid of transports and damage as much of the invasion fleet as possible. Dual barrels are probably going to be more useful than triples, because with duels I might be able to more accurately, quickly hit targets. I have the option of going with 7 inches, and these have more range, of course more damage, but less reload. They would potentially, however, have the punch to deal with the enemy warships. But I'm going to try and do that with torpedoes instead. Oh crap, I really don't have enough displacement. Uh, push this thing back. Three hundred tons for torpedo launchers. Yeah, right. One eight, one four. Push this back. Point five. Um, barbettes. Reduce the auxiliary engine a bit. Oh, good lord. I still have to add so many things to this hull. I am in trouble. Single bottom hull. Mm, that generally doesn't add that much. I'm going to have to reduce the range a little... Well, with oil 3, the range really isn't a problem most of the time. Let's first add more stuff, and then see what I need to subtract. If I want to damage warships, battleships, I think torpedo launchers are the way to go. Probably quintuples. Oh, sorry, quadruples. So four uh, launchers... I think a 21-inch electric torp should be fine. They're very sneaky, very hard to detect, and hopefully they will impact with the American ships. OK. 
Okay, 0.5. I'm going to upgrade, or sorry, downgrade the engine a bit. 34 knots. It's not as fast as I would like it to be, but, well, this is what we have. They don't launch torpedoes unless I get too close to their little PT boats. Secondary guns. Yeah, let's put on a couple of three inches. Three inch dual barrels. Can be very useful when taking down transports. And that's what we're here to do. See, over here, this one won't turn very well. Uh, if I push this whole structure forward, I might be able to put another gun. No? Yes. There. There. Because that's a nice firing arc for the 3-inch. Unfortunately, the torpedo launchers are quite tall. And that gun apparently does not like that. Hmm... Pull this back. Main tur or main uh, superstructure forward. Come on, game. There we go. Now I have a four weight of set of two point three. What about alternating this? Is that possible? Having the turret on the deck? And a very small secondary, a three-incher on there. Or two-inchers. Oh, I could have two-inchers everywhere else, basically. This is not a bad spot for a two-incher. Now we're going to have to push this back. Otherwise my offset's going to be too bad, and my accuracy is going to be down. 1.8.2. Yeah, I'll take another 2 inch over there, but slightly closer towards the side of the ship. Come on, get over here. We still have a bit of tonnage left, not that much though. When it comes to these launchers, I carry, what, two, s two sets of torps? Eight ammo per launcher. A 21-inch torpedo should immediately eliminate a battleship from 1928 or from 19 sorry 1898, so it should be sufficient. What about upgrading the turrets, the turret rotation speed that is, because I want these things to snap to a different target. Propellant, just standard high TNT, and I think I'm going to have to make a dash for those transports and quickly try and wipe them out. Okay, so that's one three, that's the second three, here's the third. And I'll take another two inch gun over there. I can still add a bit of armor, preferably to the belt. Five inches to the belt, plus 118%. And I do not intend to get anywhere near a position from where they can damage me. Turrets would be lovely to keep intact. Now I'll give the secondaries a bit more protection. There. Exactly 500 tons left for the wormhole generator. Okay, let's see if La, Gro La Gloria de España can make good on her name. Because we have Cuba to save. The lineup. La Gloria de España versus the four battleships, two heavy cruisers, two torpedo boats and ten transports. And I can see them. They might not be able to see me. Quite the way I like it. Torpedoes range out to 12.7. I can see transports. That's excellent, because that's the thing that I'm here for. I need to sink at least five of them. Shouldn't be too hard. All these different games and different designers all have their keys somewhat different. So, apologies if I mix up... See... <laughs> In Sprocket, I think holding middle mouse and then rotating, or moving, rotates the camera around the tank. Here, it's holding right mouse button. All of these things do it slightly different. Okay, torpedoes denied, just the 6-inch guns. I carry 1,572 shells. Uh, I only want to fire if I have a good solution. Because this is something that's 
perfectly fine within the purview of the three inch guns and potentially the twos. Twos at 5.8, threes at 7.7. 7. I might need those guns to deal with the heavy cruisers, those six inches. Of course, firing a torpedo salvo in here is also tempting. Ah, I think that's a heavy cruiser over there. The heavy cruiser is packing four 13 inch guns. No, that's a battleship. That is not a cruiser. That is not a cruiser. Now keep in mind, I only have another 56 minutes of in-game time to make good on my attack. I have to be quick. This is more like their heavy cruiser. Dual 7-inch guns. Okay, we have hit the DD, no, the transport a few times. And they go down almost immediately. One down. Keep in mind, these are transports from 1898. So they can really not take a hit. Transports are fragile as they are, but if they're old like this, it just gets way, way, way worse. And they're getting hit by some very, very advanced shells, as seen from their perspective. Shells, by the way, which at this point, um, when the patch is live, should have their propellant and their charge split into two different elements. So that you can more precisely define what sort of shell you want to be firing at the enemy. There we go. There's the... F yeah, they got these battleships split up into two divisions. A three and a one. I'm still rushing in at 34 knots. Secondaries on this target. There's the three inch guns. Whoa, that was one three inch hit for 260 damage. Good work. But I consider these transports more as snacks on the way to get to the battleships. Because that's the one that I really want to try and sink. These are 1600 ton transports. Sorry, 16,000 ton transports. 15 knots only. No armor. So we are really just chewing through them. No problem at all. Their battleship is at 11 clicks out, which is something I can hit at that range. I just don't expect to be able to pen it at that range. Something else that I'm kind of wondering... I think they can't see me. Because... I have seen them, but I'm not getting a notification that La Gloria has been spotted herself. That's interesting. They can't see me. The Greer is taking a lot of damage here. Oh, actually, they have seen me. Time for them to unsee me. Deploy the smokescreen. Over here we have three battleships in a line. That's an excellent torpedo target. Turn to port. Get the starboard torpedo launcher in a position and launch four torpedoes at them. Torpedo launcher is looking completely the wrong way. Although it is turning. Good. The Greer is now taking a lot of fire. I want the main guns on the Macon. In case you don't know, if you have your own ship selected and you hover over a target on the bottom right hand side, it's going to show set weapons. And I'll just hit shift, alt and right click to enable the main guns to go after the Macon. Now the Macon probably cannot damage me that badly, but I don't have a lot of armor and I'm not eager to test out how much I can take from a heavy cruiser in this era. I would rather not try. These torpedoes could, in fact, hit their battleships. But I'm kind of concerned that they might not hit the battleship and end up in a torpedo or in a, a transport or a cruiser instead. My chance to pen their cruiser is pretty bad. It's 45%, which is still better than their chance to pen me. But it means that we're going to take quite a lot of time to deal with them. Time to take out some more transports first. And let the torpedoes run for a while. 
Now keep in mind these are very sneaky torpedoes. And the enemy probably doesn't even have the faintest clue what Hydro is. So they'll be unable to fire or unable to spot the torpedoes unless they're right on top of them. Here come the torps. I hope that the Fernandina, Fernandina is not going to be in the way too much. But Vermont, Missouri and Florida have all changed course. Meaning it's going to be far more difficult for me to hit them. These things reload in little under 900 seconds. So I don't really have the time to fire or to, to wait too much between salvos. There, the Greer there has now detected torps at about 500 meter range, if that. That is the Fernandina down. It looks like the old bay is going to take a torpedo, which is not meant for her, but should completely blow the ship to bits. Gone. These two torps, if I'm lucky, will impact the Missouri. And should well, at least cripple them, if not outright destroy them. Unless Missouri is going to dodge. Which would not be the first time. I'm getting a bit too close and my smokescreen just went out. Invisible again. Greer is burning down very quickly. Whoa, we got a torp hit. Florida just took a hit. And these two torpedoes sailed between Missouri and Florida harmlessly. Now Florida does have an engine out and she has flooding in two compartments, that's active floodings. Uh, I want to have the other torpedo launcher on the other side. Once again, throw a salvo at the battleships. So we're going to do a full turn to port and hope that my turret rotation speed can keep up. But it should be, since I'm running electro-hydraulic turrets. It's just that the torpedo launcher might not be able to keep up. Launcher rotating to position. Torpedoes in the water. Alright, excellent. Oh, we got a little torpedo boat coming in here. The geranium. Greer is down due to extensive fire. Turn back. I think that the secondary should be able to deal with the geranium. The problem is that the geranium might spot my torpedoes. That's not what I want them to do at all. Oh, no, actually, never mind. They're about 1,800, 1,700 meters out. So they should not be able to spot those. Turning back. See, if I can keep the battleships at range, they cannot hit me. Um, if I can keep the torpedo boat, well, eliminated, um, they'll not be able to hit me. Because their torpedoes are so short-ranged in this era. They're only a kilometer out, and I am currently two and a half, so I'm safe from there. I think the heavy cruisers are my biggest concern, because I cannot get close. And they, well, they don't have a perfect turner circle, but they're pretty good. There we go. That is the geranium down. Where are my torpedoes at again? Oh, transport hit. The Vermont... Missouri and Florida have once again changed course, but <laughs> I did have two torpedoes collide with the transports. I will happily take that. There goes the Tolman and the Covington. Now we still need to get rid of the Marblehead and the Tuscaloosa. And I think that's the last of their transports. What's my chance to pen a battleship? 27%. Considering I'm a light cruiser, it's not actually that bad. What's your turning circle? 449. You're only doing 17 knots. Well, no. Your maximum speed is 17 knots, but you're doing less. You're doing 13 knots. Hmm. Let's throw another salvo of torps into the Vermont. Torpedoes away. And focus fire on the Tuscaloosa. Range, six clicks. 
Colorado is on fire, but otherwise fine. All I can really do is, well, put them on fire, I suppose. So let's switch fire to the Tuscaloosa and get rid of her. And so far, the Gloria de España has not taken any damage. Well, I've taken one hit out of 50, 500 shells that were fired at me. Here come the Torps. Let's see if I can now hit the Vermont. When does the Vermont notice the Torps? Because they're a kilometer out. And she's still none the wiser. Tuscaloosa is down. 600 meters. 400 meters. Whoa. Vermont attacks the torpedoes. About 100 meters away. That's impressive. 902 points of damage. Immediately massive flooding and several fires on the Vermont. But unfortunately, the other two torpedoes sailed by without doing anything. Uh, secondaries on the torpedo boat mains on the Vermont. If I can inflict some more fire, I might be able to get rid of that battleship. In the meanwhile, I'm going to keep heading in the direction of the Marblehead. Vermont's buoyancy is down to 10% of what it once was. But I'm concerned that she's going to try and pump as much of that back out. Heavy cruisers, I can easily outrun. They don't have anything on me. Vermont back to 20%. That's not part of the plan. Um... Vermont is slowly but steadily losing structural integrity. Let's switch to high explosive only and see if I can inflict more fire. Because you have standard bulkheads. I might be able to just burn them down. It's going to take me a while. But the fewer battleships the Spanish have, the better it will be. What's the Rowan doing here? What's this transport, or sorry, this uh, PT boat up to? Not much. Vermont, slowly but steadily, losing structural integrity. But their buoyancy came back up from 10% all the way up to 40. Row into 2.5 kilometers. This should not be a threat there. I have 22 minutes left to inflict as much damage as possible before I get beamed back to the future. Get rid of the Rowan. Whoa, they hit me. And once those things hit, they hit hard. That's a 13 inch. And I have flooding on my stern and a damaged rudder. Smoke up. Who was it that hit me? A 13 inch gun. From the Missouri. Good lord, I'm flooding badly. Many bulkheads, come on. We have an auxiliary engine. We have some serious anti-flooding capabilities. I would very much like to try and torpedo the Vermont again and get rid of her. Even if it is with the last couple of torps that I have. And potentially, luckily, the Florida might be behind the Vermont. Torpedoes are out. Switch main guns to the marble head. We're going to uh, quickly eliminate the rest of this transport fleet. There you go. The invasion of Cuba will not take place. And how that's going to affect the rest of the world, that remains to be seen. Because this is not the only scenario that we can expect. There will be more. Here come the torps. These two might get the Vermont and very luckily I could hit the Florida. Give her all she got. Okay. Two torpedoes crash into the side of the Vermont and kill her. Good. Now the Florida. 
I have 14 minutes to burn down the Florida. And that's about the only thing I can do, because I probably cannot pen that ship at this range. Well, I can pen bow and stern. And I have no further torpedoes left. Missouri is quite close. Quite close indeed. I'm not putting fires on the Florida. Come on. Burn her down. Let's angle a little bit against the Missouri. She still has a 60% chance to pen me, but now I'm turning away and my citadel is safe. That's better. Unfortunately, I think that with the damage to the, the, the Gloria, I just took a bit of a hit to my accuracy. It's only 8%. Of course, now I'm in a turn, so now it's worse. Smoke up again. Nine minutes left. I think it's time to head away. Because I want to roleplay this a bit. And I would very much appreciate it if... Unless they really lost sight of me. Um, yeah, there we go. The Macon spotted me again. I think it'd be best if they don't see me disappear into some sort of whiff of thin air. Because I'm about to use time travel. I'd rather have the American soldiers and American sailors go, what the hell was that? That random Spanish ship that attacked us. Rather have that than see these guys actually, well, see the La Gloria disappear. So time to disengage. Got to keep our time travel tech safe. Last thing I want to do is make sure that the La Gloria sinks. They lost sight. They can't see me. I can see them and I can shoot them for about three more minutes. But I kind of kind of have given up hopes of eliminating any of these ships. I've sunk one of their battleships. I've sunk two of their um, torpedo boats. I'd say it's not a bad day for the Spanish Navy. And hopefully, this will have enough of an impact on the future. But I'll leave that up to the, the naval architect. A naval architect, in case you don't know the term, is somebody who is a specific Patreon tier supporter, 15 bucks a month, and therefore they can send in a scenario that I'll then most likely cover on the channel, depending on how many scenarios get sent in. All right, we have come up to 30 seconds. I'm going to call it here and La Gloria survived, completed her mission, and escaped mostly unharmed. Let's see how this is going to impact the future. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I really enjoyed the scenario. I'm looking forward to the next part, which is coming up sometime next month. With, of course, the new version of the game. See you guys then.